Prophet ﷺ said, before Dajjal comes, there are years of deception. Now over the last 200 years, the tools of deception have obviously increased. When the TV first came out, some said, that's the Dajjal. It's your iPad, it is your phone. And then, no, you know, it was Facebook, and now it's Metaverse, and these are all Dajjal. And while there are certainly forms of Dajjal, certainly forms of deception that are enabled to these tools, and those tools, as they develop, become more frightening, there is the Dajjal that we hear about from the Prophet ﷺ in numerous traditions, and there is a specific twist to this Dajjal, and that is that he is the ultimate deceiver. He has the ultimate optical illusions, is able to play with with people's eyes and able to deceive them with his claims in ways that other people before him were not able to, while certainly the conditions prior to him make his arrival right. And what happens in those years of deception? The Prophet ﷺ said, a truthful person is called a liar, and the liar is considered to be truthful. Why? Because the liar is good at deceiving and covering his lie, whereas the truthful will not resort to deception to prove their trustworthiness. Then the Prophet ﷺ said that the trustworthy people are discredited, and those who are treacherous are trusted. And the Prophet ﷺ said that at that time, the most disgraceful of people speak. Their voices are projected. So people can't distinguish truth from falsehood anymore. They can't distinguish trustworthy people from dishonest people anymore. And because of that, who's going to take the stage? And the Prophet ﷺ was asked, who are they? SubhanAllah, the way he described them, he said, al fawaisiq little fusak, little men, little wicked people. But at the same time, they speak about all types of affairs and all types of things they have no business talking about. And they cause all types of issues for people. This is what proceeds at Dajjal. The world prior to him is a world where realities are distorted and people seek to create their own paradise on earth. Our sensibilities are lost and our fitrah is compromised. Our natural goodness and inclination is compromised. And so people operate in a day and age prior to a Dajjal in vanity and they can't see past their immediate surface level vision. And as people become shallower, the tools to distort shallow realities become more advanced. So people can't see beyond the movies and the graphics and the tactics and that stuff right in front of them. They can't see beyond that. But at the same time, they trust it more. And the tools by which you can distort all of that are becoming more advanced. But then people treat their senses as divine, even though those senses are being constantly compromised. And if I can't see it immediately in front of me, then I'm not going to believe in it. And subhanAllah, ironically, those who deny the existence of a Dajjal in the name of no visual evidence, they're displaying the very weakness that makes them more likely to fall for his visual distortions. I can't see it, I don't believe it. Where is this Dajjal now? Oh really, Dajjal, sounds funny. They trust their vision so much that they're most likely to fall victim to their vision when the actual Dajjal rises. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us from his fitna. Allahumma ameen. When Dajjal is presenting all of these different things to people, a virtual reality that you can step into, that will completely take you to where you want to go. And he's creating all of this deception. There's something very specific that I want to get to, and that is when Dajjal actually presents his Jannah and says, enter into my Jannah. And there's something of his magic, subhanAllah, and these tricks and this deception that speaks to a weakness that grows within us as well. That's not just about the tools, but also about the search for instant gratification an inability that we're developing to see past surface level, where people in general try to recreate themselves and their universe to fit their desires. And they don't think about the long-term consequences. They don't think about ethics. They don't think about what this is going to mean. So then what happens when this Dajjal presents his Jannah and says, here, you can escape. You can enter into this and you'll have everything that you want. You don't have to wait for anything. Just go ahead and step in. May Allah protect us. And the Prophet ﷺ said that he comes with Al-Jannah, the appearance of a paradise. And he said that his Jannah is actually fire. His paradise is actually fire. And another narration, the Prophet ﷺ mentioned that he has these two flowing rivers and there's no contradiction between the two. He's got these rivers of lava and burning and fire, right? And he's saying, this is hellfire. And then he's got these rivers flowing, you know, of musk and of milk, the image of which he says, this is my Jannah. You know what the Prophet ﷺ said? He said, if one of you sees that, if you get into a situation where you're standing right in front of him, the Prophet ﷺ said, lower your gaze, close your eyes, put your head down and drink from the boiling water. And he said, I swear it will be cool water. His Jannah is not and his not is Jannah. It's flipped. SubhanAllah, like, don't be deceived by what's being put out in front of you like that. 
And people have to ask themselves, what motivations and weaknesses the Dajjal preys upon that could be within us? The deception of Dajjal cannot happen without the deception of dunya and the deception of the devil. The allure of dunya is one of zina, zina to hayat al dunya. Right? It has appearances, but we can't see past appearances. People become relegated to the material world. They can't see past it. And the promise of the devil is what? That the consequences are not going to be that bad. The pleasure that you're going to enjoy right now is greater than any possible consequences you might face. That's a mindset, that's a weakness that's exploited and that grows. And so then the final piece of that is simply a presentation of what you want to jump into. And we have to resist as the world becomes shallower and our senses become more distorted, falling prey to that type of stuff. And thinking about the long-term consequences and thinking about purpose when it's so easily diluted and thinking about why we exist when it's so easily diluted and thinking about the hereafter when we can't see it and we don't have 3D graphics or actors or movies and thinking about Jannah wa thinking about that meeting with Allah, thinking about that meeting with the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi thinking about that idea of being held accountable and thinking about that idea of reward and punishment. You gotta see through it all and remind yourself that I can't turn my senses into something that's divine, nor can I put my trust into tools that are becoming ever more deceptive and deceitful. May Allah protect us from all of the fitan that we are surrounded by. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow us to develop that strong sense of faith and certainty that we see through deception and that allows us to act in that which is pleasing to Him. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward us for the best of our deeds and forgive us for our shortcomings. Allahumma ameen.